So you, you collect handhelds. So you might have a dusty old Game Boy Color perhaps, or a Buff Flanders Retro Zero, or maybe you got a Odroid Go, or you know, a Game Boy Pocket. But do you own one of these? The Rocket Boy. I'm not going to say I'm not going to say excuse the mess because it's just the way it is. I mean, this is the kind of pickle that I get myself into, like a desk full of junk, and I just kind of press on. But the, started this three days ago, but I think midweek last week, and uh, just threw down some sketches of what I wanted. Rocket Boy. Uh, initially thinking about a mechanical mechanical movement of the screen but then I just thought nah that's too much that'll never work and then just got the dimensions I wanted actually I think it's a little bit slimmer than that but uh, just the general gist and then straight on to the prototyping because I just thought uh, I, I thought I'd do things a different way and not sort of agonize over the design and just go straight to Tinkercad start knocking things out and uh, build up some momentum, which worked. It's I think it's a terrible way to design things because you're just firefighting the whole time. But it just it does motivate you if you can get things in your hands and just tweak them. Anyway, this is the first one. I use really crappy PLA uh, just because you know just to use it up. Uh, second one here, getting slightly more finalised. Uh, third one, which I moved on to some slightly nicer PLA, horrible colour, just to get rid of it. And uh, it's coming along. Got the USB-C um, charging there. I did try the actual name on the back there, but I, I'm not really sold on it. Uh, but it did, did uh, maybe think that a bit of grip on the back was nice. So I kind of, I'm kind of leaving that on there, just a bit of g generic grip there. This is the, I think this controller is pretty much finished now. Uh, well, there's a bit that's dropped out there. Uh, but it's nice to have the original, you know, some original controller buttons. Like these, these are Game Boy Color controller buttons. And it just, it's just a world of difference between this and your, your clicky, you know, your clicky buttons that everybody tends to use on every project. I just feel horrible. Uh, whereas this is a just really nice feel. And uh, I used some of, uh, I sort of reused a bit of faceless text board because it was actually quite handy because it does have the um, connectors on the back there. So these are all Game Boy Color, color med Game Boy Color membrane there. Faceless text PCB or chopped up part of it. It has everything apart from ground, unfortunately. There's no ground on the back of either of these. <laughs> a bit annoying. Um, yeah, so those go in there. There's not much room for anything else in the controller, unfortunately. Just the just a charging board and an off switch. And then everything else is going to be in the actual... Let's get rid of the bit of this rubbish. Everything else is uh, in the um, the head, which it's not perfect because it makes it a little bit top heavy. I mean, I might have to end up putting a bit of weights in here or something, a bit of lead in here or something. I'll see. I'll see what happens later on. But this is the stage that I'm at at the moment. So the D1 mini is there, battery, speaker, a few holes, perforating the back to let the sound out, and. Uh, Yeah, essentially the screen just rotates portrait and landscape. So the electronics, I hadn't even, didn't even know whether they'd work until this morning when I finally bothered to solder them together. Miraculously, it did, it did work. It's quite a simple circuit, really. This is Daniel Champagne's Mega Tiny Joypad. 
and uh, he's got all his games on here, which is it's just nice to have them all, you know, in one place. Got the big two point two point four two inch uh, OLED screen there. So the whole purpose of the um, rotating screen is because there's three games on here that have a portrait mode. And uh, obviously life would be easier if that wasn't on there, but <laughs> if they were all landscape rather. Um, but, you know, that's that's the that's the game, isn't it? Figuring out how, how you can do it. So the game ne the screen needs to be re rotated for these games. And the Tiny Arkanoid is, is a brilliant game, actually. I can't really play when I've got this camera up in front of me. <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, going pretty well so far. I can't really foresee any any major hitches, uh, but we'll see. I'm not quite finished yet. <clears throat> so I would have, I'd uh, I was on my roof done today, and uh, honestly, I would have taken more video of me making this, but uh, it was uh, there was a lot of nyeh, nyeh, nyeh. so you know it wasn't really going to happen, but. Uh, yeah, I'm on the host straight now. Uh, controller's done. I did have a little issue with the controller. The PCB idea didn't pan out because there was actually too much resistance on this. There's like 1 to 2K resistance in my head. I was just thinking this is like on and on off, you know, on off thing. But it's not really. There's there's always a bit of resistance there. And that's that's why they bother with gold contacts and all that jazz. Um, if you're using the, there's nothing fancy about this, and uh, it was just way too much. It just wasn't registering on the D1. So luckily the pad was okay, and I just sort of swapped out to a silent switch, which is a membrane switch anyway. So you know it has got the same feel as uh, as the Game Boy membrane or the Game Boy Color or whatever. And the, this is, you know, exactly what I wanted. Got the lovely sort of Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Pocket feel. Instead of just these horrible clicky things that, uh, you know, as I said, it really seems to go for. <clears throat> so I've just got to trim a few wires. Everything works. I can't, I'm not really foreseeing any issues unless I've, I've forgotten something. Um... So I'm just trimming a few wires because I need a little bit of a little bit of give. These are silicon wires, so they're quite bendy. Um, plus, there won't be you know won't be infinite amounts of uh, bends here. I'm not going to be using it that much, and um, so just trim it down a little bit because it's not there's a limited space in there, and then uh, we're done. So here it is, Rocket Boy, all finished. I would say I'm about 97.2% happy with it. I mean, it looks great, which is uh, which is the main thing. <laughs> it works. It, you know, it works. You know, there's a few niggly things. You know, the screen rotation is a little bit, uh, bit junky, janky. Is that the right word? Uh, sort of got that thrift shop vibe to it a little bit, but uh, you know, it's not bad. Also, could have been a it does manage to lock in place, but I don't know how that's happening, but you know, I'll take it. But yeah, it's all finished. Whoops, starting the landscape mode. This is obviously Daniel Champagne's mega tiny joypad. Uh, that's basically what it is, a reskin. And and I wanted obviously the uh, proper controllers from the Game Boy Color on there, or any kind of Game Boy. Yeah, very cheap to make this. Really, these screens have come down in cost. They used to be a crazy amount of money. These two point uh, two point two four is it two point four two? Well, these largest OLED screens used to be more than I was going to spend on them, but they've come down now. And the uh, D one D one Mini is uh, you know five quid, even if you get it, you know, or, or cheaper if you get it from AliExpress or something like that. So yeah, cheap project and uh, 
Happy with the result. Let's just get a portrait mode. That'll do. Swing that screen around. Ooh, getting the light on it. Sorry. <laughs> Most of my gadgets just end up on the shelf. I don't really play them that much. Well, they're good games, you know. Basic but uh, fun, fun sort of time fillers. Anyway, so there it is. Rocket Boy. Another project. Nailed. Thanks for watching.